The Admiral Bill Stubblefield, who's been cuffed today a couple times by the audience, <laughs> correcting his mistakes. Indeed. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that, Maria. He's an admiral, but I, uh, uh, me either. You know, the general Sorta. population. They're not afraid of him. <laughs> But we're in studio. We're in him. studio. Yeah. We have to incur the wrath. Different. During huh? the commercial breaks, when you correct Bill during the show, during the commercial breaks, he just goes off on this angry, I'm sure loud tirade, <laughs> just belittling you and calling you a swabby. And then I run back. I was never in the Navy. Yeah. I'm not a swabby. I am so beaten down today. I am so chagrined. I am Nonsense. shattered. So I probably will sit here not just... And not say a word the but, next time. But hour. I will nod my head. Yeah, yeah. shake my head. Sure you will. Maria's sure downing will. the variety of that claim, Bill. Yeah. Indeed. It's, it's just not happening. Uh, via telephone, the uh, Chief Health Officer for Berkeley County, Dr. Kevin McLaughlin. Good morning, Mr. Dr. Kevin McLaughlin. How are you? Fine. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Have you ever been called a swabby by Bill Stubblefield before? <laughs> uh, not by Bill, no. But uh, I know uh, Bonnie pretty well, and I suspect that she keeps Bill in... Uh, uh, good shape and keeps them in line. So, D- does she ever, Doctor? If you just knew how much, <laughs> that's good for you, though, Bill. <laughs> men who are married live longer than men who are not, because their wives make them go to the doctor. Yeah, it's as simple as that. <laughs> G- given our own <laughs> apathetic yeah. choices toward our own health, we would just not go to see doctors and die prematurely. It's but what we do. Thank goodness for wives. Uh, Doc, let's uh, talk about this Absolutely. winter season here. Uh, first and foremost, I, I know there's a whole bunch of new germs that are uh, going around and some old ones that have come back as well. But I have to say, uh, going by my football team this year, we were much less ill than we were last year. The first year the kids got back into the mm-hmm. schools from COVID, I guess their immune systems weren't as tested or whatever. We were sick from the first practice last year to the end of the season. This year was a bit more mild. Are you experiencing a similar thing around the county in regards to kids' health? Um, I will tell you that all the respiratory viruses that are typical that people knew about before COVID, RSV, rhinovirus, the flu, they're still out there. COVID is back. I mean, COVID is not going anywhere. Let's put, just put it that way. It's mm-hmm. just not going anywhere. It is part of the new pantheon of uh, our respiratory viruses so i mean we're going to have people getting sick uh it's going to be a pretty typical um season for the respiratory viruses we're starting to see some influenza a had some of that the other day there's still a little bit of rsv floating around there's rhinovirus which is another uh, respiratory virus that's out there. So, I mean, um, much like I, I used to joke when my kids went to uh, uh, daycare early on, that every time that they go to daycare, they would come home with something new and everyone would be sick for a, a period of time. As things kind of move through your community every day, everyone gets exposed to it and, and it kind of works its way through. And that's kind of where we're at right now for most of the respiratory viruses. I want you to know that hasn't changed. Your son, Colin, still goes out, brings back germs every day to the radio station and gets us all sick. Uh, oh, it's, it's Colin's fault that everyone's <laughs> sick. Ah, okay. You brought it up. You're the one that said he was nobody, out there bringing germs else, home. Nobody, nobody <laughs> else brings anything else in here. As my dog is barking at everybody here. Your, your, your dog heard Colin's name. It's like, Colin? Where, where's yeah, Colin? Where's yeah. Colin? Where's yeah. Colin? 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 What, what, what? Hey, talk to me about RSV and uh, the effect it's having on kids uh, now. And what, what age groups are most affected? Um, kids that are most affected for RSV are the younger ones, the, the more immature ones. And what I mean by that is you need your a good, strong, healthy, um, working immune system. Um, and that doesn't actually happen until you're, you know, around, I think it's 12 to 15 months of age. So once everything kind of, you know, you get exposed to things and they, uh, you, you start making your own antibodies because at a, such a young age, you actually are dependent on the antibodies that you get um, from uh, your mother while you're uh, in the womb. So 
uh, until your system kind of does its own thing. That's kind of where you're at. Yeah. Is there is there a uh, vaccine that they're doing for RSV? Yes, there is a, um, a vaccine for older adults, and I think there's also a new one out for the younger uh, infants. It's not as available as it could have been, um, but um, it's starting to roll out. It'll probably be a, be a lot more available next year and, and later in this year, but... It's relatively new, uh, Kevin, as well, yes. right? The That's what I thought. That's what Absolutely. I thought. Absolutely. So, I mean, much like I, I, I'm just using COVID as our um, most recent bias or most recent experience. Uh, you know how when the first uh, rounds of the vaccine kind of came into the area, there wasn't as many or the availability was low. And then, you know, later on, as the supply increased, there was uh, a lot more, um, a lot more supply than there is demand, even with what we have right now. Um, But, you know, all in time, it'll, it'll kind of work its way through and people who want to get vaccinated um, will get vaccinated with the RSV. Um, I'm not sure it's on the uh, uh, on the uh, timeline to be a mandatory uh, virus. I'm not plugged in. Um, I'm sorry, uh, mandatory vaccine. Uh, I'm not plugged into that as of right now. Um, but you know, I would not be surprised if it goes along with you know the recommendation with the flu vaccines and the COVID vaccines, et cetera. Uh, doctor, let me ask an or- organizational question. Uh, during the COVID uh, and also various flu outbreaks, uh, the county public health uh, service was absolutely indispensable. You folks took the lead and did phenomenal work, and both from keeping people more calm, providing the inoculations, the vaccines. So, again, hands down, you did a great job. Today, though, uh, fa- vaccination, it's so much easier to go to the local pharmacies to get the vaccinations, whatever shot you need. You have the hospitals. What role, what niche does a uh, county public health service play? Uh, certainly not to the same degree you had during COVID, but on a daily basis, what niche do you play? I mean, with vaccinations, we're still vaccinating almost every day between the uh uh, people uh, still requesting a uh, uh, COVID vaccine, still requesting uh, all the school vaccines for their uh, for children. So there's stuff all the time going on uh, with our, our nursing staff uh, vaccinating people uh, constantly. So um, yeah. and, and I, I-, I will tell you our, our, our t- oh, my dog, they didn't do anything for three hours and now all of a sudden they're barking like crazy um it, you know it never fails yeah but um yeah I, uh, I, I, you know I, they're vaccinating like crazy and i can tell you they have um they go to schools they vaccinate most of the the um staff at the schools that's still their responsibility they still um at times will do clinics uh through um uh, private uh, vaccinations. They'll go to organizations um, and vaccinate uh, mostly with a uh, flu vaccine at this time. But yeah, I mean, they're still busy, quite busy with uh, the everyday goings on uh, of vaccination and, uh, you know, uh, infectious disease. Uh, we, we definitely still have uh, hepatitis. We have HIV. We have syphilis. We have lots of things that go through our area and we treat our our um, our public for whatever kind of comes through that door yep yeah you mentioned going out into schools and the organizations such as the county commission the judicial system and the like uh yes uh, that is a very critical role and to be honest i'd forgotten about the mobility how you go go on site and provide inoculations Dr. Kevin McLaughlin yeah, I mean, and his dogs are guests on the program here today. <laughs> what are the names yeah, of your dogs yeah, there, Doc? Uh, well, we're, uh, I have uh, Mai Tai. Uh, I have <laughs> Rona. 
and I have uh, Zeke here right now. So, All right. Um, and uh, Rona and Zeke are the bigger dogs, and they're deciding the fight. And the smaller dog um, is uh, what we call the fun sucker, and she basically <laughs> stops them from having fun and barks and takes away whatever toys they're playing with. And she's the one barking right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Colin, if you have any pictures of these dogs, put them up on the screen at some yeah, point. Yeah, we want to see the dogs. Yeah, That's Colin, for sure. These dogs. Colin, Colin probably has plenty of pictures. Now, now the uh, the local trash uh, company uh, is uh, out picking up right now, so the dogs are having to bark at them now too. So That's good. They're equal opportunity just, barkers. You know, it, you know it, it, it never it never stops. It's just you know <laughs> a very active household. Uh, if if uh, if it's not people, it's dogs. So, Kevin, uh, question. I know for a fact um, that we're hearing at Hospice of the Panhandle um, of outbreaks, COVID in specific, at several area nursing homes. Um, and we've admitted, unfortunately, um, you know, several patients within the last several weeks um, who were COVID positive. Uh, can you talk a little bit more um, about that in general? Yeah, before you answer that, Heather Compton wrote on our Facebook page, my pre-K son's class is having a COVID outbreak. I wish the county still had some kind of protocol for isolated outbreaks. Go ahead, Doc. Well, much like anything else, um, that's why I try to say this early on, COVID is new to us or recent to us of three years plus, but it's not going anywhere. It is, it is the new, it is, I don't want to say the new flu, but it is a, a, a group of respiratory viruses that are very common, uh, easily transmissible. Um, I mean, you're going to see flu outbreaks this year as well. We're already starting to see RSV and um Influenza A, and it's going to be spread in the same way. Cough, sneezing, um, you know, kids tend to get runny noses. What do they do? They use their tissue? No. They use either their sleeve or they use their hands, and they keep going on things, and they keep touching things, and they keep doing things uh, with each other, and it gets spread. So, I mean, I'm not trying to um, – say that we're not going to see COVID, but we're going to see COVID as well as we're going to see all these other viruses. Um, the good news is we have this three and a half plus year history now and experience and knowledge so that we can treat it better and more appropriately uh, with that knowledge. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. I mean, yes, I mean, I, I feel for the families that have COVID uh, in their schools. But, I mean, five years ago, we would have the same thing with flu or RSV mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a new virus that has kind of become, uh, you know, it, A, it's um, – all over the news and everything else. I mean, we're very aware of it for what it's done, but um, we we just need to understand that it's not going anywhere, and it's just going to be as we gr as our kids grow older. It's going to be part of their history. I mean, no different. Well, I don't want to say no different. It is going to be somewhat similar to what ended up happening with the HIV. Um, history that many of us remember from 30 years ago um you know if people got that virus it was a death sentence um now we've got medicines we've got uh plans and everything else to keep people healthy and keep it away from even being transmitted so we're going to learn on covid we're going to learn on um all these respiratory viruses just like we now have a vaccine for the RSV. I mean, it's all kind of coming up. And, you know, we as a uh, society, we learn, hopefully, we learn from our mistakes and we learn from our experiences and we get better. 
and we get better information, better technology, and better uh, ways of treating and doing things. So it's all kind of, um, I feel for the, again, I feel for the people that are having the, the, the COVID, but um, a lot of them, even the ones that are coming in with your hospice, I mean, many of those aren't going anywhere. Someone's bringing that into their house and then they're becoming sick and then they're ending up coming to you. Isn't that correct, Maria? Yes. Yes, that's true. Uh, doctor, we've been talking uh, a lot about... So, so how do you stop yeah. a, you know, a, a debilitated patient that is dependent on so many outside sources for you know, daily needs and you know, with the virus being as prevalent as it is, it's kind of um, you know mainstream now. That's people are going to get it. People are going to transmit it. It's all it's all, all going to be part of it's all going to be part of how we deal with uh, life going forward. Doctor, we've been talking a lot about vaccines. What about masks? Oh, you really want to throw me under the bus now, don't you? No, no it's a... Um, go ahead. Yeah, it, 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 masks are very controversial, and, and, and that's probably a nice way of putting it. So depending on what mask you wear in the situation that you wear it, are you protecting yourself or are you protecting others? So... I mean, it, you can get it down into the weeds, but I will say if that you're ill or having a lot of coughing, sneezing, uh, upper respiratory symptoms, if you have to go out or be around somebody, a simple mask will help. I didn't say stop uh, transmission or anything like that, but it will help. But the best thing is good hand washing, being smart. If you're ill, um, coughing, sneezing, etc., don't go around a large group of people. Don't go around people that are going to be compromised um, unless you absolutely have to. And then take every precaution possible. I mean, um, the N95 masks still work, but that you now you're going to protect yourself. Um, but uh, there's a lot of uh, people that have now created a stigmata around masks um, just with kind of the way the our society is right now but it I mean masks to a certain extent are going to help I mean you know when COVID first hit several years ago we had a massive drop on all our respiratory viruses including um, influenza because everyone was masked and if you had a fever of 100 or 101 plus and coughing, you didn't go to work. You didn't expose other people. It was just, you know, we saw massive drops in those things uh, just with the common practices of what we were doing at that time. Now we're seeing those numbers go back to what was pre-COVID levels because people are going back to, oh, it's just a, you know, a, just a little cold. Well, your little cold may well be flu or RSV and you give it to somebody um, unexpectedly that is compromised, now you have a situation where people um, get really sick, end up in hospitals, or, you know, if you're already under the care of hospice, you now have to go to the inpatient system or, or inpatient uh, facility to be treated the mask thing is as divisive of word now in 2023 oh. as any other word we can probably come up with with the exception of about maybe three or four others uh and it's fascinating because i'm just looking at our facebook chat and depending on what you believe about masks you can cite whatever source you want to show that they do work or that they don't work and what what's amusing about that is is that both sides will then cite science <laughs> as yeah. to why they are why yeah. they are correct as to why a mask well, works or doesn't work. And, and, and that's kind of when you know I was just joking with the uh, the admiral um, is you know it is controversial. Does it help? It's a a lot of it when you get down to 
certain things, the best word is it depends. Um, you know, depends on what outlook you're looking for, and what outcome you're trying to to achieve. So, um, you know, it really depends. I, I can't I, I can't say it enough on what you, you know what you're going to be doing and that you need or need not to wear a mask. I mean, I recently was on an airplane, and there's probably about 12 out of 100 people plus that wore a mask. Some of them in the large groups were wearing the simple covered mask. Some of them had the N95 on. It, it really it really depends on what your outcome and what you're trying to achieve is, uh, whether that uh, the mask is going to help you or help others or not. All right, so we've got Colin's got pictures of the dogs. Colin, bring let's up go the dogs. to the dogs. Right, the do- everyone loves dogs, right now. So there's a picture of a dog carrying what looks to be a soccer ball, uh, black dog. That is my that is my tie. That's my tie. Okay. All right. Yes. And then there's another one with two dogs together. All right. There's a bl- a brown fluffy one. That is Rona. That is our uh, golden doodle. All right. And then who's beside Rona there? Colin, is, is that is that st- is still my time? It's either my time. There's we have two uh, uh, black-haired dogs. Yeah. One is the smaller one is my tie with the soccer ball, and there's a larger one that is Zeke. Yeah, this is Zeke. Um, has a different face. Yeah, Zeke is a uh, a version of a lab. Okay, that makes sense. So he's got a speckled uh, nose. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so he is actually uh, the uh, dog of um, our daughter, or Colin's sister's, Catherine's uh, significant other. Which so which I'm, which one I'm loves dog for a little bit. Which dog loves Colin the most? Um. <laughs> Is Colin love? Probably, probably, uh, probably Mai Tai. Mai Tai. Um, he spends more time with Mai Tai. Um, Zeke and uh, Rona tend to do their own thing at times. So, all right, that makes sense. Colin's been to college; he would spend time with Mai Tais. I can get it. I got it. Doc, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate your time yeah. this morning, man. Any final thoughts? Not a problem. Oh, by the way, how's the uh, uh, olive oil business going for you. I'm starting to run low, but I'm going to make a Pittsburgh run around Christmas, and I'll head down to Penn Mac and get myself some more extra virgin Sicilian <laughs> olive oil. It is the only kind I will use. I just uh, I just saw a uh, post that uh, um, olive oil prices are to start going up because of a supposed drought in Spain that the olive there. production is markedly down. So, you yeah. know, the, your... Uh, the cost of your uh, liter of uh, liquid <laughs> gold for your cooking is going to go up. You know, it's well worth it, Doc. Some things in life are worth the money. And it was dry there, Doc. We were there, and they were talking. Um, all the places we visited in Spain said, yeah, look how dry it is. We haven't had rain in months, and the price is really going to escalate. So I can bear it. I yeah. know you can. <laughs> Got to get the good stuff. Got to get the good stuff. Doc, have a great day. Not a problem. Everyone take care. Be healthy. You Thank too, you. Doc. Thank you. Dr. Kevin McLaughlin, Chief Health Officer in the Berkeley County Health Department.